In today's Our Regents Business Online Extra, we're talking comedy, ventriloquism, and magic with Andy Gross, a performer who has taken the world by storm with a video cutting himself in half. Ah! <laughs> And he's on his way to the Strand Theater in Zelianople on Saturday, February 19th. And he joins us right now from Los Angeles. Welcome. Good to see you. Yeah, good morning. Thank you. I got to ask you about the trick because it is all over the internet. I'm not going to ask you how you do it. I know that's, uh, you're not allowed to tell me. But the idea to do it, where did that come from? Pretty old. It's an old idea. I mean, cutting someone in half, you know, it was the old magic trick of cutting a woman in half. Uh, so it's one of the oldest magic tricks, but I kept thinking, is there a way to do it without those big old boxes? Or is there a way to do it that I'm not on stage? Um, I just kind of wanted to be uh, a little more modern with it. So I came up with, with, with this idea and I was doing it on, in my stage act for a while. And then I took it to the streets. One day I go, you know, this might be kind of fun just to go out in the street and, and just get people's reactions. And um, I took my daughter, took an iPhone, and I went out there and we started recording people's reactions and we got some pretty good ones. And, and luckily for me, it really worked well. Talk about reactions. I know when I first heard about it, before I'd seen it, I thought, okay, he's going to be on the stage, dark, you know, lots of things right. going on in the shadows. And then you pull on the video and there you are out in a park and people are as blown away as if, as if it's a real thing. That's right. That, that's what I really liked about it because you're right on stage. You can do anything you want. You have control of the lights, you have control of the angles and everything like that. But out in the streets, it's a little bit different. And this trick just works perfect for it. It, it really, really works. And it's such, it's such a shock value. So when I come around the corner and, and I give this little growl, which is strange in itself, um, it just people just don't know what to think. How did you go down this this particular path? And you know, in terms of your stage performance, where you're, you're mixing ventriloquism, magic, and comedy all together. Well, you know, it started early on for me. I was when I was nine years old. I fell in love with ventriloquism. It was the first thing I learned. I saw the movie Magic with Anthony Hopkins and Anne Margaret, and I thought, "Wow, this is great! I have to learn this." Finally, went to the library. Then I ordered a course in the mail, you know, out of the old back of the comic books. It would say, fool your friends, be the life of the party, throw your voice. And I learned how to throw my voice. And then I had another friend that did some magic and he showed me a couple of card tricks. And all of this just kind of, I mean, I just caught that bug early on and I never stopped. I never stopped doing it. I remember I told my parents, I said, told my dad, I said, I want to be a doctor when I grew up, but he insisted I become a ventriloquist. Okay, yeah, I buy that, right, <laughs> absolutely. The other part of your background I was fascinated by is, is the pivot you made in your career. You actually didn't start out with the magic and ventriloquism thing. It was all about racquetball. Yeah, that was just a strange thing. I always joke, I went from playing professional racquetball to becoming a ventriloquist. <laughs> Isn't that pretty much a natural progression for everyone? I don't know. Um, it's really strange, but my first thing, I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, and St. Louis was like the breeding ground or the mecca of professional racquetball. And a lot of people are going, professional racquetball? Is there such a thing? Well, there is. I mean, and especially back in the late 70s and through the 80s, it was a huge, huge sport. You might remember it was one of the fastest growing sports in the country. They were building racquetball courts, I mean, everywhere. People were playing. It was crazy. It was really crazy. And for some reason, when I grew up in St. Louis, I was around this. My brother was into it. And we both became uh, professional racquetball players. I, in fact, I was 15 years old when I was playing professionally. And I really thought, and so the magic of ventriloquism was just a hobby. No one took that real serious. You know, I was just a hobby. I would throw my voice in school, you know, and make weird noises and sounds and do some tricks for friends. But no one thought that it was going to turn into a career. And what happened was I moved to California for racquetball, for all the endorsements and sponsorships and some tournaments. And when I was about 25, I think it was, racquetball just pretty much died. The sport itself just was phasing out. Um, it, it was a hard sport to televise. So sponsors started figuring, well, can't really play this in front of millions and millions of people because you couldn't televise it. So I had to make the shift. All of a sudden I went from making really good money. I really didn't go to college because I was doing you know, fantastic with the racquetball. Um, so I didn't know what else to do. Here I am in Los Angeles and went from making great money, loving everything with, you know, with the sport, and then it just stopped. So I go, now what? 
And I went to uh, open mic nights at comedy clubs out here in Los Angeles. And they said, yeah, that's pretty good. And we like that. Come on back next week. And I kept coming back and coming back until finally they had me the middle act and then the headliner. And, and then I never looked back. So it's coming up on Saturday night. I'm looking forward to having you, Andy Gross. It's going to be fun. Yeah, this is, I think, my second or third time maybe here. Oh, really? At the here. Strand itself yeah. or up here in Pittsburgh? Yes, at the Strand. Okay. At What's well, a great Strand. venue. I mean, you must know. Somebody likes me. Yeah, but, but the Strand's a great venue. It's a really intimate house. Yeah. I love it. And every time I've been there, the crowds have been so enthusiastic. They've been great. And um, I, I always have fun there. So I'm, really, I'm looking forward to it. I'm sure they're going to be excited to see you again. Andy Gross, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. I'm Bill Flanagan, and that's today's Online Extra.